Now I feel very strongly that dentists should understand neuromodulators, particular the botulism toxin, and how it relates to therapeutic and cosmetic treatments in dentistry. Because of that, I've put together an introductory course into neuromodulators, specifically the botulism toxin, so we can discuss the basics of what that toxin is and what it's not, and what you can do in dentistry with it, and what are the contraindications that are involved, or some of the complications that you might get but also to discuss the anatomy because there is no cookbook approach that you can take to doing neuromodulators and get consistent good results. So we'll discuss anatomy quite a bit and then we'll talk a little bit about practice integration. Well frankly it's our patients. They're the ones that convinced me to look into it and finally decide to do it and it's really the baby boomers because when you take this lady and she looks in the mirror she doesn't see herself as she is, she sees herself as she used to be. As we get older, we sink, we sag, and we wrinkle. And the result is that we look tired most of the time, and some people have this angry look, and we don't like that. We want to feel and look youthful. So that's why Botox has really kind of picked up, and I have a lot of males in my practice that actually use Botox, because these guys are in their 50s. And they're out in the work environment and they're competing with these guys in their late 20s and mid 30s that not only are energetic, they also look energetic and youthful. And these guys are just as sharp as they are, but they got that run down, tired look. So they're using the Botox to get rid of those wrinkles. So they look rested. They look like they've had a nice rested vacation and they have that youthful appearance again by using Botox and then augmenting it with the fillers. So how big a deal is it? Well, frankly, in the last 10 years, we've seen a 405 increase use of Botox. That's pretty significant.